Hi everyone, um, it's Sunday and there's no sun, not in, not in Cairns anyway. Apparently you're getting uh, some decent weather down in Melbourne which is good because uh, it's been a long hard winter for people down there so uh, I don't blame them for getting out and about and enjoying the, uh, the 18 degrees which is quite balmy for this time of the year. Um, here today I think it's only going to be about 25 or something so that's uh, it feels a bit nippy which is crazy I know but that's how it feels and it's a bit uh, I can see the wind blowing a bit here too uh, I'm actually just trying to go high tech instead of having all my little cheat notes um, written down because my handwriting is absolute crap even even printing it's bad we are I'm a blind bastard and I'm hopeless at that sort of thing um, so what I've actually done is I've put it onto my tablet here I've got all my little notes and um, That'll, that'll guide me through the process when I before I actually get around to editing. Um, I'll just do my little narration first. This is how uh, the inside information on how I do it anyway. And um, and then I'll do the editing process, which will probably take a couple of hours. That's that's the real grunt work. Especially seeing I have lots of images in the um, in the presentations I do for the uh, for the videos. Uh, if people aren't reading all that stuff that I'm putting in from the newspapers, please tell me because I'll I'll cut back on them. We'll make the editing a lot easier. But if people like having all those uh, articles up on screen, uh, yeah, well, just tell me which way you feel about it, whether you like that or not, and um, I'll adjust the uh, the content uh, depending on what people uh, are looking for. There's no point me going through all that work if uh, if people really just don't don't want to read that much stuff on screen which I can understand anyway just keep that in mind and please give me feedback on it I really appreciate that we're starting off again with Victoria sorry for being repetitive but that is the place where things are happening um, mainly this time I'm, I'm I'm concentrating on the way the media is approaching this I'm getting really disheartened with the way the Herald Sun is is reporting the coronavirus and the way uh, Victorians and Melburnians in particular are, are reacting to it. I think it's quite reasonable for people to get pissed off and actually protest. I think it is part of our, our rights as a democratic country. But you wouldn't know that from uh, the Herald Sun, which now seems to be more like Pravda than, uh, than a proper um, newspaper from a liberal democracy. But again, journalism in, in general is going downhill at a rate of knots. But um, what, what got me about uh, this particular article here is that they, uh, they refer to the COVID deniers now. They're using that sort of language, which is the language of the left. And I'm wondering whether the, um, the Herald Sun is doing this just because they know that the, uh, Melbourne is pretty left wing and they're just trying to placate their readership. It's pretty poor, though. Now, so they're basically using the slur COVID deniers to flout stay at home orders and protest again. Tinfoil hat wearing brigade is regard, is uh, mentioned in the article as well. So the Herald Sun is quite happy to use these slurs upon people who actually decide to uh, to think for themselves and actually uh, kick back against uh, dr the draconian rules that uh, Daniel Andrews has uh, instituted. I think it's quite reasonable that people do that. I think it, it, it's more frightening if people don't say anything. Anyway, that's, that's the Herald Sun. That's all I'm going to talk about. Uh, the Herald Sun today. Um, now we move on to the Daily Mail, which is actually a British tabloid, uh, which is online in a number of countries. And I'm finding that their reporting is much better than the local uh, Herald Sun reporting, to be quite frank. So from according to the, um, the Daily Mail, crowds pack into markets and sun seekers head to the beach in defiance of Andrew's warnings. I'm paraphrasing here. This is my text, but you, you can see the headline and the story on screen. Melburnians have been cooped up since July 8th under draconian stay-at-home stage for lockdown. So you can, I can understand why people just want to get out. They've got, they've got, everyone's getting cabin fever. I mean, it's quite reasonable. Um, of course, Andrews is uh, reluctant to relax his python-like grip on Victorian liberty. I, I really think he gets off on it. I think he loves the the, uh, the power trip he's on right now, and um, and if Victorians don't um, uh, kick back against this, he'll just he'll, he'll take all your rights away. It's just, it, it's just he's showing his 
it's funny when he the mask is going on Victorians and the mask is coming off Daniel Andrews. We're seeing the real Daniel Andrews now, and it's not a pretty sight. And uh, just a change of pace here, the, again with the Daily Mail, we've got a story about a young conservative guy. Uh, he's a 19-year-old Trump fan, hell bent on ousting dictator uh, Dan. Claims the uh, the heavy-handed lockdown is ruining lives, and I'd have to agree with him there. Uh, Edward Burke is his name, and he's currently studying at Oxford University. They, they don't say what he's actually studying. I'd be interested to see what course he's doing, but um, yeah, he's he's at, at Oxford Uni at the moment, uh, so he's no dunce, and um, and he's a conservative guy, and he's young, very young, at nineteen. Now the funny thing is, he admires he admires Trump and Thatcher, and he's a member of the Liberal Party's Sunbury branch. No surprise, he's a member of the Liberal Party. Although they're trying to make out that that was a bad thing in the uh, the article, I don't know, quite know why that's a problem. Is a, I mean, it is a, poli a legitimate political party. Uh, you're still allowed to join other parties apart from Labor in, in Australia at this stage, but who knows how long that right will last. Now, uh, another topic: the state of Australia's borders. Does Australia functionally exist anymore with this patchwork of border restrictions? You can see the map I've put up on screen here. Um, this is a graphic that is important because it, it vividly illustrates how there's so many differing uh, laws regarding the, uh, the lockdown between states and it's a real patchwork and it must be an absolute pain for uh, businesses to having to operate with all these different rules. I just think this shouldn't have happened. I, I thought there was some sort of high court challenge to this type of thing occurring because it's supposed to be free trade in Australia within the borders, and for some reason, it doesn't seem to be the case. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. So um, that's a bit of a worry. Now, speaking of the borders, we've got a very distressing story here from Sky News. I've got a clip coming up, and it's in regards to relatives of a 101-year-old grandmother. Uh, they're unable to say goodbye to her uh, as they're not able to enter Queensland to, to see her due to inept bureaucracy. There, there was some stuff up with the, they had the, they, they're under the impression they had the okay to go and see her and they turn up to the border and they're told the rules have changed. It really stinks. I think Anastasia Palaszczuk thought she was doing a really smart thing by, by being a hard ass about the borders, but to me, it appears to be a total PR disaster, mainly because of the ineptitude of her medical advisors and, um, and also her own poor judgment. It's re becoming a really, uh, I cannot see how this is going to help her in the upcoming election. It could be a nail in the coffin. And uh, I'll be very happy if that's the case because I think uh, it, she's abysmally handled this particular uh, situation. Anyway, I'll roll the, the tape from uh, an edited uh, bit of the Sky News report just to give you an idea what we're talking about here. Her daughter and granddaughter had an exemption, but were stopped by Queensland officials after driving 1,000 kilometres. Really frustrating when we got to the border because our passes were no longer valid. We were told at the border. Told the rules had changed that morning, despite being from a regional town with no known COVID cases, they were turned around and are now driving 1,000 kilometres home. We try not to sort of get too caught up in it because we all just break down and cry. But, um, you know, we, we just really want to get to that chance to say our goodbyes. It's important to remember that these initiatives are all put in place to keep our community safe. These border restrictions do not limit the movement of patients requiring urgent or essential care. But even that, a change on the message 24 hours ago. In the direction, it very clearly says that anyone can come across the border in an emergency. Oh boy, I'm sorry, more bad news here. <laughs> now I'm going to talk about house prices and that's, uh, that's not a, a pretty picture either, unfortunately. Yep, the, the RBA predicts a 40% drop in house prices. The only good news is that the RBA's credibility is in question, in my opinion anyway, given their crazy policy of relentlessly reducing interest rates. So there's now no incentive to, to save. I think they've really done a a piss poor job of uh, handling the uh, the monetary policy in this particular country, uh, pushing interest rates to virtually zero, and it's had the effect of pushing up house prices artificially. And now we're now we're going to be paying the price for this. People, 
I think that they're actually wealthier than they are because the house prices have gone up and they and they've been spending more. So consumer demand's gone up, but conversely, if the house prices drop and if they go down forty percent, you're going to see a constriction in uh, consumer demand, which is going to affect the whole economy. So um, the the RBA has been in the past bolstered artificially bolstered housing, which has pushed the prices way up. And now we're going to be paying the price. We need a readjustment because money really needs to go into investment in businesses rather than housing. We've got an excess of housing in this country, which is even overemphasized now because we've got the immigration cut. Um, so you're, you're seeing we've just got way too many, many uh, rooms available in Australia. So we need to move investment to different areas. And, uh, and it, even though it's going to be distressing for a lot of people having a housing uh, how's it, having the house prices dropped so much, um, well, it, it will lead to a readjustment in the economy, which is probably well overdue. There's no guarantee it will be 40%, but that's a, that's a very dramatic reduction. It could be 40% over a long period of time too, which would probably be better. Uh, but I do think that the, the, one of the vulnerable areas in the economy is investment properties. And, uh, and Martin North of uh, Digital Analytics Finance, uh, he actually has, has his study, he's, he's got a, a profiles of, uh, of a lot, every suburb in Australia, and he's done a, a mortgage stress uh, study, and he's found that amongst investors who are generally in well-heeled suburbs, they're finding a very high level of, uh, of mortgage stress at the moment, which means that they may be forced into disposing of their investment properties and if the investment property sector starts dropping in price, uh, then you could have a cascading effect across the whole economy. So it could get very ugly. So um, the, the government will be trying desperately to stop it happening, but um, they don't have any, any uh, interest rate levers left because the interest rates are so low now they're having absolutely no effect if you reduce them. So that particular... Uh, Weaponry is no of no use anymore. So that's the other problem. Plus the fact that it's, it, it who who want to put their money in the bank at the moment, you get nothing for it. it you're actually go, going behind. You're you get definitely behind the, the eight ball because the inflation is much higher than really than it's actually stated, and um, so you really are losing money. Um, it's uh, I'm in that situation myself. I've got a bit of cash too, which is which sounds like a sensible thing when you're not sure how the economy is going to go in the future. But in the in the interim, you're getting no return for your money. You're, you're actually losing money. So it's not good. Written down here, investment properties may well be the canary in the, in the coal mine. Um, so if these prices, if those prices collapse, yep, like I say, cascading effect, it will not be nice. Now, it's just uh, something a little esoteric, a bit, bit more around the economy. I'm probably losing uh, viewers hand over fist talking about the economy. I actually did study economics at university and, and learnt absolutely nothing in the uh, three, three, well actually four years because I actually bombed out the second year. Uh, going to an exam after drinking a bottle of, of uh, Southern Comfort is probably not a good thing to do. I found that out the hard way. So I didn't do that again. I decided maybe that wasn't the best way of approaching an exam. Anyway, that's that's a, that's by the by. Uh, yeah, the, I just want to talk about the the Swedish economy now. Apparently, it's been uh, a hit uh, a lot less than uh, other economies. It it shrank uh, eight point six percent in April June period when uh, when all the when the coronavirus uh, kicked in. But that's actually uh, not as bad as other economies. Uh, the biggest it was the biggest quarterly fall for Sweden in 40 years, and the economy. Uh, I, I think the economy will probably recover fairly fast because they haven't had a particularly bad lockdown. They've they've actually been very liberal with their lockdown and and be able to keep business ticking over. So hopefully they'll be okay. Although a lot of their income is from exports, so it really is out of their hands in a way. It depends what their customers are doing. If they decide they don't want these products, well, you know. They, they may they may take a hit. They do have a broader base of exports than say Australia, uh, and we we basically have um, uh, ours are dominated by mineral exports and education, and and the education one I know about personally because I was living in the Melbourne CBD, and a lot of the people living there were students, overseas students, and that's a whole a cash cow that's just gone now. 
And that's another area where you'll see prices really cascading downwards, I think, in the Melbourne CBD because there's just so many empty rooms. I know that that's happening in Brisbane CBD because I've got a friend who's actually living in student accommodation there. He got it really cheap, a third less than what they were asking for when uh, with advertising for overseas students. That's how much it's softened in, in Brisbane. So I imagine... Melbourne's even worse. Thank God I sold my flat there because, I mean, if I tried to sell it today, I, I'd, I'd hate to think uh, I, how much slower I'd, I'd, the price would be. So it was a good move, I think, in retrospect. Anyway, that's it. I've bored you enough with economics. I won't talk about it anymore. That's the end of the video. This is probably a fairly short one, although I always say, I always say that and then I go and look at the... Look at the uh, at the file I've created, and it's always it's actually longer yesterday than the previous day. So maybe maybe this is going to be another marathon. But anyway, look, I'll finish up with some very good news, and I've got a huge thank you to all the people who have supported my channel, especially recently. You really, yeah, uh, you've gone above and beyond, and I have finally reached the pinnacle, the summit. The summit has been reached, and I've got those five hundred subs on the nose i haven't it's not not uh, 4.99 not 501 it's actually 500 so i don't know how you've managed that you've actually uh finessed it so it's exactly the right number so i've reached that milestone it'd be nice if i could double that but uh <laughs> i mean realistically uh this has been a very very good period for me the uh, the number of people visiting the, the channel has gone up quite substantially. I have been putting more work into these videos and I'm glad that it's appreciated. And, um, and I've been getting some positive feedback. So thank you everybody for, uh, for doing that, for, for uh, commenting, for giving the thumbs up and there's some thumbs downs as well, but that's always the case. You can't please everyone. Uh, but the majority seem to like what I'm doing. So that's the main thing. And, um, and yeah, I'm just really, really happy. And, 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 and don't stop subscribing just because I reached 500. We can still still keep going. I can't monetize the, the site uh, until it gets to 1,000 anyway. Uh, I don't even know if I want to monetize now. I mean, if I, if I wanted any, any cash flow from this, I'd probably rather uh, do it through the other site and through Subscribestar because I don't like Patreon either. Uh, they're the ones... That's, that's the... Um, the funding model that most sites use, they ask people if they want to you know, chip in some bucks, they go to Patreon, which actually has a lower rate uh, they charge for the, the person like me to set it up. But uh, I don't like the politics of, uh, of the guy who set it up. He's actually excluded a lot of conservative people from his site. So as far as I'm concerned, he can go F himself. I will not give him any of my business if I do go down that track. Anyway, that's uh, that's how I feel. I'm principles of head of head of money in this case. So look, thank you again very much for uh, all your support, and uh, and that's the end of the weekend. I don't know if I'll be able to do another video for tomorrow. I'm going to be fairly tied up, but uh, look, I'll see what I can do. I might better just uh, I've got some some walk and talk footage. I might better just hobble together pretty quickly late tomorrow afternoon. So just see how I feel. I'm, like I say, I've got a, I'm tied up for virtually the whole day. So. Uh, anyway, look, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend and, um, and I'll, um, I'll try to get some more material out tomorrow. See how we go.